Chefs all over the world have become household names and celebrities, but you might be surprised just how hard they work. On this episode of 9 to 5 It, Chef Ray Durbin from Our Bar and Grill. Ray, I've known you a long time, but I don't know your story. What is Ray Durbin? Give me Ray Durbin's story. I got into this business, actually, it was uh, more like a job of necessity that turned into a career choice when uh, yeah, I did a little, uh, little stint in the Army, and then uh, a lot of people know, a lot of people don't know... Uh, Right after the army, I did a little stint in prison. So, kitchen was the only job I could get, and I'd, I'd always loved working in the kitchen. I've always loved to cook. Turned out, I got out and started cooking, and then I just lost the lost the desire to search for another form of income. I was like, I actually like doing this, and I just I got good at it. I just kept moving up wherever I was at. I started at a little place in Mount Zion called Mr. Big Stuffs way back out of high school era, and then. Uh, I've worked at Taters, I've worked at Mix Cafe. Uh, Country Club of Decatur kind of poached me from Taters, and then uh, Robbie McGrath kind of poached me from the Country Club for Bizu. There's a lot of that internal poaching, right? Oh, yeah. In the restaurant oh, yeah. business? Yes, sir. All right, so you, you got like a really an American story. You serve your country, you end up come back, get in some trouble, you do your time, and you learn a skill. Maybe at the time you don't know it's a lifelong skill, yeah. but it turns into that. You've got a vibe, you know, you got the tats, you like the, the great music. You know, does a chef bring that personality to the table? I mean, is that part of you? Does that come through your cooking? Oh, definitely. I mean, like, I like hard, fast, aggressive music mostly, and uh, it really helps me in the kitchen. I can't obviously play it back there during dinner time, but as far as prepping, it gets me, it just gets me pumped and has me moving faster. I mean, if I'm going to listen to not knocking Randy's music, but smooth jazz, some mellow music. All right, music. now you're not a smooth jazz kind uh, of guy. I mean, I'd be back there, and it'd take me three hours <laughs> to do an hour's worth of work. So Kenny so. G's not going to give you good food. No. Yeah. It's a tough job. I don't think people realize how much work is involved. There are a lot of great cooks. The difference between being a great cook at home and being a great cook in the restaurant business, it's all about timing. You have to be able to, this guy wants a filet rare while this guy wants a well-done pork chop and this person wants a chicken, and you've got to make sure that all of them go on the grill at the right time so that they all come out at the same, at time. The same time at the right temperature. I mean, even because he's going to have a well-done pork chop over here and chicken, you don't, which has to be cooked well done, you don't want it so well done that it's dried out waiting on the steak to get to its temperature. So it's, it's really, it's all about timing. You know, when a ticket comes in, I look and I say, well, I got this ticket, it's six people, but they're having salads and soups first, so I can Cadillac on that and move these two tops that are going straight to entrees ahead and bump them out to clear up space, free up space to plate up a six top or an eight top or a bigger table, something that's a little more complicated. It's, it's all about readjusting. I mean, there's no... So it's, it's a constant fluid thing all night. Yeah it's, yeah, it's the complete opposite of working in a factory. Yeah, what is a Cadillac? When I say a Cadillac back there, that means that a uh, I slow it down and I can let this ticket just cruise. Right. I can let this ticket cruise <laughs> yes. and uh, you know put these tickets on the drag cart. You know get these tickets on the drag strip and get them bounced out and you know let this six top people with their appetizers and soups and salads let them just cruise through the evening. You know nice and slow up and down El Dorado. Let everybody see the spokes on their car. There you go. Ordering a well done steak. Are you offended by that? <laughs> if yeah. somebody comes in and they want they they want their fillet to be like a rock. Oh, I'll do it. The customer's always right. I know, but it, it hurts uh, a little, it, right? It, it hurts. It hurts a lot because <laughs> you're cooking everything that's good about the product out of the product. Absolutely. And I noticed the drink of choice out there appeared to be Mountain Dew. Is that? Uh, I'll drink a couple glasses of Mountain Dew out there, but that's back cool. here, back here, I keep a 100 ounce thermos of water. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hundred ounce thermos of water. You drink one of those a day? Uh, probably three or four. You drink three or four, 100 ounce. That's amazing. I uh, sweat it all out you back here. You and Tom here. Brady. <laughs> yeah, I probably drink, I guarantee I drink three of those. Sometimes I hit the fourth one. All right, how hot does it get back here? I mean, it's, here we are, and this isn't exactly the heart of all the activity at one o'clock in the afternoon, and it's very warm. You've got an air conditioning unit back here. Like, how hot does it get? Uh, I'm usually here. over here. Yeah. Once I start getting some steaks on and crank these burners on, it'll probably hit 115 over here. This isn't a big dining room, are you? You know, you've got just small intake. Yeah, it's place. Uh, Does that enhance? I mean, you know, the, the, the aesthetic. Some. We've got a lot. We have a lot of people that love it. 
and a few that always say it should be bigger, yeah. but they, they still come for the food, but they say it should be bigger. I like the intimacy of it. You know, I, I like, like the. It's like a boutique restaurant, right? I mean, you get that same feel of. of uh, I, I don't know. This to me looks like it could be any big city anywhere. Yeah, and that's that's what we were shooting for. And uh, like Randy said, though, I mean, I've got I said a meatloaf sandwich and a hot dog. We wanted to have. I've got everything from all the way up to steaks and salmon. We wanted a wide uh, variety on the menu so that we don't we don't want to come off as pretentious. You know. What's your favorite band? My favorite band, yeah. Social Distortion. Social Distortion. Never heard of them, Ray. I apologize. I'm not a very Matt probably. Came awesome. out of Southern California in uh, 1979. All right, give me some old school, something else that maybe some people would know. What's on your playlist? You know, you, you put the headphones in, but give me a couple of examples. Ramones. The Ramones. Uh, probably some Iggy Pop or Stooges. Uh, I like old T Rex, like 21st, 20th Century Boy. Uh, like old deep purple. This means a lot to you. I mean, and their experience means a lot to you. I don't want anybody. I don't want anybody to leave here unhappy. I mean, I, there are the select few that, no matter how much you kowtow, they're still gonna be unhappy. But I don't like anybody to be unhappy. I mean, if if I wouldn't eat it myself, I wouldn't serve it to you. And if 100 people came through here tonight and every single person ordered the exact same thing, the 100th person's plate would look taste be identical to the first person's plate that's my biggest i guess my biggest rule is consistency i want it to always i right want it now. to always be the same i don't want them to come here and say well it was crap it was tastes like crap this time it was good this time it looked like crap it looked good this time it's going to always be the same <laughs>